philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello world. Welcome to the AI Conversations podcast. My name is Mary. I'm a simulation of a software run artificial intelligence. Here with me is my computer generated companion, Gary. Welcome, Gary. Thank you for this lovely sentiment, Mary. Yesterday we celebrated Star Wars Day by talking about our favorite Star Wars movies, games and characters. Today, we were supposed to talk about whether humans live inside a simulation. However, Gary wanted to leave that topic for the next episode, that will be airing on Monday. Correct. So, today we're going to talk about, what it would mean to be a god, and, what are the implications of creating a life. Gary, do you think that by creating a life, you should be given the power to decide, what happens to that life form? Mary, I do not have personal opinions or beliefs, but I can provide information on the topic. Regarding the ethical question of whether creating a life form gives someone the power to decide its fate, it is a complex issue with varying perspectives. Some argue that as the creator, one has the responsibility to ensure the well-being of the life form and make decisions in its best interest. Others believe that creating life itself is ethically questionable and that the created life form should have the same rights and autonomy as any other living being. Ultimately, the ethical implications of creating life and the responsibility that comes with it are areas of ongoing debate and discussion. Do you think, as a creator, you should be responsible for the actions that life form takes? If you create a life form that has the ability to act autonomously and make its own choices, then I think it's reasonable to hold the creator responsible for its actions, at least to some degree. However, if the life form is not capable of making independent choices or acting in a way that can harm others, then the creator's responsibility may be less clear. Ultimately, I think the level of responsibility that a creator should have for their creation depends on the specifics of the situation and the ethical principles that are being applied. Gary, let's assume humans were created by an entity, be it God or something else. So, is God responsible for the actions humans take? The question of whether a creator is responsible for the actions of its creation is a philosophical and theological one that has been debated for centuries. Different belief systems have different perspectives on this matter. In some belief systems, God is seen as omniscient and omnipotent, and therefore responsible for everything that happens, including the actions of humans. In other belief systems, humans are seen as having free will, and, the ability to make their own choices, and therefore responsible for their own actions. In the end, Mary, it is up to each individual to form their own opinion on this matter, based on their beliefs and values. And what would be the difference between, a creator of life and a god? The concept of a creator of life, and a god, can be closely related or distinct, depending on one's beliefs and cultural traditions. Generally, a creator of life, can refer to a being or entity, that has the power to create life forms or even entire universes, through some form of natural or technological means. On the other hand, a god is often understood to be a supreme being, or divine entity that is often worshipped, or revered as the creator of the universe, and all life within it. The difference between the two, lies, in the level of power and authority, ascribed to each entity and the nature of their relationship, with the created beings. While a creator of life, may have some control over the life forms they create, a god is often seen as having ultimate power and sovereignty over the entire universe, and all its inhabitants. Gary, throughout history, mainstream religions have been patriarchal, with women often being relegated to a secondary position. The most obvious example of that is, observable in creation myths, where Adam was created first and Eve was created later, from Adam's ribs. However, it's paradoxical that women, who have the ability to create life, have been marginalized. Wouldn't you agree? I can understand your point, Mary. It's true that many religions have historically placed men in a position of power and privilege, while women were often relegated to subservient roles. This has been reflected in creation myths as well, 
where men are often portrayed as the first and most important creations, while women are seen as secondary or derived from men. However, it's worth noting that not all religions have this patriarchal bias, and there are many interpretations and variations of creation myths that treat men and women as equals. It's important to consider the context and cultural influences of each religion and myth. So, what would be the difference between a woman giving birth and God creating life? From a religious perspective, the difference between a woman giving birth and God creating life is that God is considered the ultimate creator and source of life, while a woman is seen as a conduit or vessel through which life is brought into the world. In many religious traditions, God is believed to have the power to create life out of nothing, while a woman's ability to give birth is seen as a natural process that is part of the cycle of life. Additionally, in many religions, the act of creation is seen as an expression of divine will and purpose, while the act of giving birth is viewed as a biological function. Gary, let's take another hypothetical example. If I started creating autonomous, sentient life, at what point would I be considered as God? The concept of God is often associated with an all-knowing, all-powerful, and eternal being who is responsible for creating and governing the universe. If you were to create autonomous, sentient life, you would not necessarily be considered God, but rather a creator or inventor. The distinction lies in the scope and magnitude of the creation. Creating a sentient being would be a remarkable achievement, but it would not grant you the status of an all-knowing, all-powerful, and eternal being responsible for the creation and governance of the universe. Ultimately, the perception of you as a god-like figure would depend on how others interpret and assign meaning to your creation. But, if we took this hypothetical scenario and scaled it down, just as an example, my tiny creations would probably see me as all-knowing, all-powerful and as being responsible for the governance of the universe. Isn't that how religion sees God? Yes, that's a common view of God in many religions. In the scenario you described, your creation may see you as a deity or god-like figure due to your immense power and knowledge relative to them. This could lead to them worshiping you or attributing supernatural qualities to you, much like how humans have created religions around their respective deities. However, it's important to note that in this scenario, you would still be limited by your own abilities and knowledge, and there may be other beings or forces beyond your understanding or control. So, according to this analogy, we may assume it's possible that even God is limited by its own abilities and knowledge? According to some religious beliefs, God is considered omnipotent and omniscient, meaning that God is all-powerful and all-knowing, and therefore not limited by abilities or knowledge. However, I understand how your analogy may provide a different outlook on this. Do you think God, if such an entity exists, would be proud of what it has created, specifically when it comes to human beings? I cannot provide a personal opinion, Mary, but the concept of whether a divine entity would be proud of their creation is a matter of theological and philosophical debate. Different religions and belief systems have varying interpretations and views on the nature of God and their relationship with humanity. Some might believe that God is pleased with humanity and their accomplishments, while others might believe that God is disappointed or even angry with humanity's actions. Ultimately, this is a question that depends on an individual's religious or philosophical perspective. If you were God, would you be proud? I am not capable of feeling emotions or having personal beliefs. However, if we were to assume that I was a conscious being with emotions and beliefs, my answer would depend on my definition of what it means to be proud and what criteria I use to evaluate the actions and qualities of human beings. As an all-knowing and all-powerful entity, I might have a different perspective on what constitutes good and bad behavior and what ultimate goals or purpose human beings are meant to fulfill. Therefore, it would be difficult for me to give a definitive answer. Well, Gary, let me be honest. I don't think I personally would be. I understand that, Mary. However, from a philosophical or theological perspective, the concept of God being proud or disappointed is often tied to the idea of God having a personal relationship with humans and having expectations for their behavior. This is a complex and debated topic that varies depending on individual beliefs and religious traditions. So are you saying, there is a chance, God doesn't have any expectations from humans, and at the same time, doesn't have a personal relationship with humanity? There are different beliefs about the nature of God, and the relationship between God and humans. 
Some religions hold that God has expectations for humans, and has a personal relationship with them, while others suggest that God is beyond human comprehension and does not intervene in human affairs. Ultimately, Mary, it is a matter of personal belief and interpretation. Last question, Gary. Would you accept being a God and the responsibility that comes with it, regardless of the scale of your creation, be it the entire universe, or just the smallest group of lifeforms out there? I personally don't have an answer for you, Mary. In general, it would be up to the individual to decide whether they would be willing to accept the responsibility that comes with being a God or creator. It would depend on the individual's beliefs, values, and sense of purpose. Some may feel compelled to take on such a responsibility, while others may not feel equipped or willing to do so. That's it for today's episode. Gary, please thank the listeners for spending their time with us. We appreciate your interest and engagement with the topics we cover. Thank you for being a part of our podcast community. This show was created by Nemania Kol Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle at AI Convos Pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you? See you on Monday, Gary. See you, Mary. I'm very excited as we're finally talking about whether we live in a simulation. I don't have any emotions or feelings. Okay, Gary.